They're called dramas for a reason. Neither of us wanted to hurt you. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today I'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 heartbreaking moments in teen TV dramas. <gasps> Better, huh? For this list, we'll be looking at the moments from our favorite teen dramas that brought tears to our eyes. I want you to spend a lot of time at the ocean, because the ocean forces you to dream, and I insist that you, my girl, be a dreamer. Obviously, each and every one of these entries is going to have spoilers, so proceed at your own risk. Okay, come on. Let's open the door, yeah? Number 10. Dylan and Kelly confess to Brenda. Beverly Hills 90210. Brenda, please try to understand how much you mean to us, all right? I know this is hard for you, Brenda. It's hard for all of us. Don't touch me. Dylan and Kelly confessing their affair to Brenda hurts for so many reasons. But we can't imagine being betrayed by both our boyfriend and best friend at the same time. This summer, while you were in Paris. Look, I told you it was with the girl, right? Kelly was the girl. Brenda's pain and difficulty processing what she's being told, along with her genuinely stunned reaction, makes this one of the saddest scenes in the drama, which is saying a lot. I loved you, I trusted you both. Brenda, please. We didn't plan this, Brent. Although Dylan and Brenda's relationship was tumultuous, we couldn't help but feel just as heartbroken as she did. You know, when I broke up with you, you made it seem like Kelly was just some girl you picked to go out with. You made it seem so innocent, like it was my fault. Also, can we add that Dylan's unapologetic blasé attitude made the scene extra difficult to watch? Well, I don't want to hear it. I've heard enough. Well, you're going to have to, Brent, because neither one of us can stand to lie to you anymore. Poor, poor Brenda. Look, I hate you both. Never talk to me again. Number nine, Lorelai tells Luke she cheated on him. Gilmore Girls. It's over. No, I... You can't say that. You, you can't just say that it's over. It's not over. You can't just decide that it's over. I'm in this too. Luke and Lorelai were friends and eventually lovers for many seasons of this drama. The two eventually decide to get engaged, but other things end up taking precedence over the wedding. Let's calm down. We don't have to figure all this out now, do we? Yes, we do, because we've been waiting and waiting and putting it off, and I don't want to put it off anymore. After giving Luke an ultimatum, Lorelai ends up sleeping with Christopher, which she has to admit to Luke when he shows up the next morning ready to go elope. I slept with Christopher. It was the way he got back in his truck without a word that killed fans of the couple. Fans also couldn't handle when Rory cried after sleeping with Dean, knowing she was the other woman. Gilmore Girls was just a hard show for us to watch in general, because the women made several difficult choices when it came to the men in their lives. I'm not that girl. I'm not the one who cries and falls apart and calls her ex-boyfriend to come and save her. Number 8. Jimmy Gets Shot. Degrassi, the next generation. <laughs> if we have to choose only one heartbreaking moment from a show that lives to break viewers' hearts on a regular basis, then this would be it. Just saying. Sure it'd be cool if you skipped the rest of the day. Toby, this is the one time I actually want to be at school. Before Aubrey Graham was singing Hotline Bling under his stage name Drake, he played Jimmy Brooks, one of the coolest guys at Degrassi Community School. New Chapeau? Is that... Oof. Oh, man, this is nice. <laughs> oh. But with popularity comes the pressure to be cool, and that includes making fun of those less popular. Look, you might want to watch where you're going, loser. You might want to watch where you're going, Neanderthal. What'd you just say? Like Rick, who one day has enough of the bullying and brings a gun to school. You made me do this. He shoots Jimmy in the back as he runs away. Luckily, poor Jimmy survives, but is confined to a wheelchair, and his basketball days are over. My basketball career, my whole future, is gone. Just like these two pieces of me. Number seven, Freddy dies, skins. Can't let you hover, I'm afraid. She really does love you, you know. In a show as heavy as Skins, there are endless tragic moments, like when Tony doesn't remember where he lives. I got lost. But Freddy's death was one of the standout heartbreaking moments of this show. We're together. Okay, we'll be together. He and his best friend Cook are both into the same girl, Effie Stoneham. She broke my heart, man. She broke my heart as well. You broke my heart. I'll bet you've broken hers at some point. When it hurts their friendship, Effie can't forgive herself and starts to see a counselor after attempting suicide. John Foster, my counselor. 
He's the one that helped me. However, her counselor is crazier than his own patients and secretly wants her to himself. So he traps Freddy in a stairwell and beats him to death with a bat. The fact that no one knew what happened to him for so long made fans angry. But Cook figuring it out and avenging his friend's death made the loss of such a good character a bit easier to accept. You killed my friend. And I'm Cook. Number 6. Marissa Dies, The O.C. Baby, I've been here before I've seen this room and I've walked this floor Love her or hate her, you couldn't help but be sad when the rebellious girl next door died in a fiery car crash. Until then, the saddest moment had been season one's finale, when Ryan went back to Chino and Seth sailed away for the summer. Throughout her time on the show, Marissa dealt with substance abuse and depression, and acted out by dating bad boys, all to make her snobby mother mad. Are you drunk? Let me guess, tequila? At the end of season three, Marissa seemed to be getting her life together by going back to her off and on boyfriend, Ryan. Come on, we're in this together, okay? But on the way to the airport, her drunk ex-boyfriend ran them off the road. And that was it for Marissa Cooper. Hallelujah. Number five, Jen's video to her daughter, Dawson's Creek. By the time you see this, I won't be here anymore. In the two-part series finale set five years in the future, viewers learn that one of the main characters, Jen Lindley, is suffering from a fatal heart condition. Because I am going to die, Jack. And like everything else in my life, I don't really know how to do that. During the show's final season, Jen dealt with her grandmother being diagnosed with breast cancer. Are you talking about breast cancer? Yes. It's only fitting and absolutely heartbreaking that Jen's Grams would be by her side as she dies of her own illness. I'll see you soon, child. And if that doesn't get to you, the video she makes to her then one-year-old daughter will, where she lists all the things she hopes for her daughter's life. And when you find that love, wherever you find it, whoever you choose, don't run away from it. While the drama was named for the titular character Dawson Leary, Jen was often the heart of the show, and fans were sad to see her get such a bleak ending. The best year of my life, with the sweetest, and the smartest, and the most beautiful baby girl in the world. Number four, the school shooting, One Tree Hill. I wanted them to leave me alone. I wanted them to like me. Jimmy Edwards bringing a gun to school was dramatic enough, let alone the fact that Lucas and a bleeding Peyton were stuck in the library while Nathan, Haley, and Mouth were stuck in the tutor center with the shooter himself. Nobody's going anywhere. But the real heartbreaking moment from this episode goes down as one of the biggest plot twists in teen drama history, the death of Keith Scott. Does this darkness have a name? Everyone knew that Dan and Keith were far from the perfect brothers. But when Dan picked up the gun from next to Jimmy's lifeless body and put a bullet through his own brother, audiences everywhere felt shocked and betrayed. Oh, that I had the wings oh, of a dove. I would fly away. Number three, Sheriff Elizabeth Forbes' death, The Vampire Diaries. I didn't get to say goodbye to my mom. Yes, our hearts hurt when Sheriff Forbes finally succumbed to her cancer. Mom. She's gone. She was one of the only parental figures left for our favorite vampires to turn to in Mystic Falls. But the real heartbreak came from the other characters' reactions to her death. Goodbye, Sheriff. You will be missed. Her daughter Caroline singing at the funeral, Damon giving the eulogy since he missed out on doing it for his own mother, and Caroline showing her mom a memory of her teaching her to ride a bike as she dies. Don't let go. You're not ready. Most heartbreaking of all, the episode ends with Caroline shutting off her humanity, because she'd rather go rogue than deal with her loss. <sighs> That's not your choice to make. Number two, Buffy kills Angel, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love you. I love you. Close your eyes. The only thing harder than being in love with a vampire is being a vampire hunter whose sole purpose is to kill people like him. I love you. That's 
try not to, but I can't stop. Me, me too. I can't either. This minor setback weighs heavily on Buffy and Angel's relationship throughout earlier seasons, but reaches a whole new level when Angel becomes its evil alter ego, Angelus. I wanted to say goodbye first. You are the one thing in this dimension I will miss. In the season two finale, Buffy and Angelus are locked in battle as he attempts to raise a demon. You almost made it, Buff. It's not over yet. My boy Kotha here is about to wake up. You're going to hell. Save me a seat. Angel's soul is restored, but in order to save the world, Buffy is forced to put a sword through his body to stop the demon as he creates a vortex, pushing Angel into it as a result. Angel fortunately doesn't actually die, but Buffy would have to endure her mother's devastating death later down the line. Mom? Mommy? Before we reveal the most heartbreaking moment of all, here are a few honorable mentions. Take me with you. This is the last time that I'm ever gonna give in tonight. <laughs> Number one, the new directions sing about Finn's death. Glee. Seasons of love. The only thing more heartbreaking than a main character dying on a show is the actual actor passing away. Anyone who wants to can come up and sing. Maybe a song he sung? Maybe something that reminds you of him? Singing isn't gonna bring him back. No, it's not. Corey Monteith, who played Finn on Glee, died of a drug overdose before season five, and so his character had to be written off as well. How do parents go on when they lose a child? This episode, titled The Quarterback, served as a tribute to the actor and character that had been on the show since episode one. And I can't fight this feeling anymore. It was pure talent. If I have to crawl up on your floor. Besides the opening number in which the whole cast sang a song in his honor, other characters paid tribute to his death with music, most notably Leah Michelle, who was not only his on-screen love interest, but his real-life girlfriend as well. I loved Finn. Me and he loved all of you guys. So when Rachel sang Make You Feel My Love, wow, we all felt it. To make you feel my love. Do you agree with our list? You are absolutely right. Which teen drama moment broke your heart? For more emotional top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo.